Welcome to Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about how to sleep at the base of your tree. I talked about this, uh, I think it was last summer, and got a lot of feedback. I was surprised how many people really uh, um, rallied behind this topic. Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails is brought to you by Redneck Blinds, Coat of Silence Apparel, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail, Fuse Accessories, Elevate Tree Stands, B3 Releases and Broadheads, and Hoyt. So the whole idea if you, is if you can't get away from the spot that you're hunting clean at the end of legal shooting time where the deer don't know that you were there, like for example, you gotta go through a bunch of deer to get back to where you parked, then you have two choices. Either you can't hunt that spot because you can't be educating all those deer, or you can't leave. So some spots, are so good that you need to hunt them. And that means that if that also includes bumping deer on the way out, then you gotta fall back on option number two, and that is you can't leave. So I started doing that on one of the farms that I was hunting back in 2021. I killed a really nice buck. And I think it was uh, 14 days of hunting. I don't know how many nights I slept at the base of the tree, probably six or eight. Uh, I slept in blinds the rest of the time. I never walked back and forth through that farm because of the way that it's set up. You had to go past all the deer coming and going. It was just a big valley with ridges on top and I didn't have top access. So everything funneled down through the bottoms and that's of course where all the deer were first thing in the morning and it lost light. And if it was still out, you know, like a lot of times it is real early and real late in the evening, it gets really still while the deer hear me from every direction. So it was just a, a, a nightmare of trying to hunt that without you know, bumping a bunch of deer. Well, I started sleeping out there and uh, I did end up killing the buck I was after. But um, I'm gonna talk about today how you actually do this. Like not only just the whole concept of it, but really specifically uh, what are the, the pieces of equipment that you need to carry with you. So we're parked right now, right below a stand I've got up on this ridge. So like, let's say if I was hunting this, this is where I would park. You know, it might be on a e-bike or, you know, maybe I'd walk up to here. I might not come plowing up here on a four-wheeler, but we're, we're in the spot where I would start. We're going to work our way up to the stand location. And then I'm going to show you how I would set this up for one of those uh, deals where I was going to sleep out at the end of legal shooting time. So let's get moving. So I'm starting. I've got my gear in a uh, waterproof canoe pack. And we do a lot of canoeing, so I've, I've got several of these things. And, and uh, it's just uh, Cabela's makes something called a Boundary, Boundary Waters Pack, I think. That's what this is. So this serves two purposes. Obviously, it lets me carry all my stuff and keeps it waterproof, you know, if it's, you know, the conditions aren't good. But just as importantly, at the end of legal shooting time, when I climb down out of the tree, I'm going to put all of my hunting stuff in this and then seal it up. And that's going to keep the deer from smelling anything during the night. So keeps the dew off it, you know, and then I can get up in the morning and put it back on and go back to hunting. So let's, uh, this isn't too bad when you do it this way. Um, it really kind of turns into a nightmare though when you've got to carry your tree stand with you um, if you're going in to set up because it's just so much to carry. I'm not getting there. Uh, that's why. It's, uh, it's just a lot of stuff to carry but that's just the nature of the beast. You know, if we were going in here to set up like a hanging hunt, um, I'd have all of this stuff. Plus I'd have my tree stand, my packs, you know, all the stuff that I carry when I'm setting up a stand. All right, let's go climb. So the stand is up on top of this ridge. And normally these are the kind of spots I hunt you know, that, that uh, the deer bed on these ridges. These are usually awesome spots for cruising bucks during the rut. I'll hunt them mornings and evenings now. They're usually better in the mornings, but they can be still decent in the evenings. But you always wanna go into the wind going up. So we're assuming that the wind is coming off the bluff top, you know, blowing over us here. We're going up into the wind uh, to reach the stand. I like going in when there's a little bit of wind. You know, I don't hunt a spot where I'm going onto a ridge if it's really calm. I won't go in that way because, you know, too many deer know. But 
on a midday deal with some wind, you can sneak right past the, the bedded deer. Um, I've done it many times. So again, we're assuming it's a, you know, seven to 15 mile per hour breeze blowing. We're going into the wind, a little bit of background noise with the leaves, branches are moving. The deer don't really pick up on me. I can get all the way up to my tree without bumping anything. So normally, I'd be moving really slow and glassing ahead. And you can spot bedded deer. And when you do, you can work around them. Um, surprisingly, they are surprisingly um, comfortable once they bed. So as long as you don't make a bunch of noise, you can usually find your way around them. So yeah, just go slow, glass ahead, use the wind. You want, like I said, you want some wind so you can sneak better. We're about 15 to 20 yards, 15 to 20 yards from the, the tree. Um, normally I'd be looking for a spot for my camp right now. I want the camp to be downwind, you know, so that when I climb out of the tree, I'm going, you know, in the, in the direction of the wind. I don't want to have it too close because I don't want the deer to be tripping over it. Like if there's a trail, there's a pretty good trail right here which like I said, is about 15 yards below the tree stand. I'm not gonna set up between that trail and the tree. We'll go up there and I'll show you where the stand is, but now I'm looking for a spot down here someplace where I can set up my camp, someplace where, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna bother the deer even if something comes through there during the night. So let's go up and look at the stand real quick and then I'll back you down um, to where I'm gonna put my camp. Pretty good trail. I mean, it's a good stand. I mean, we should kill the crap out of deer there. Maybe this year. <laughs> Sleep, sleeping up here. That's how we're gonna do it. So, real good trail there. So there's another trail right here, just a few yards from the base of the tree. And like I said, up on top, it's you know, kind of a super highway. So we'll go look at that. The stand is in the tree right behind me here. So this is pretty awesome. This is, I mean, we could have driven the four wheeler right to here, you know, and the blind or the stand is, you know, seven yards away, but that defeats the purpose of hunting this bedding ridge if you drive all the way around and come up through it. So we parked below it and came up the, the bluff straight to it. But there's a crab apple tree right here. Um, and obviously the deer are gonna be coming through here. I could probably make a couple mock scrapes here to sweeten it up even more. But the wind is gonna be blowing that direction, um, you know, blowing toward the stand uh, over, off, the top of the, off the top of the ridge. Any deer passing below the tree should be under our scent because it drops off pretty fast. So anyway, that's the layout of this spot. That's not the whole point of this episode, of course, but I wanted to bring you up here and show it to you. Now we're gonna back, you know, we're gonna backtrack. I put the camp up before I hunt because at the end of legal shooting time, it's gonna be dark. I don't wanna be, you know, fumbling around trying to put this thing together. I wanna do it, you know, during the day while there's a little bit of wind, while I can see, get the camp set up. And then at the end of legal shooting time, just really sneaky, and, and slip out of the tree and get in there and uh, keep the amount of uh, you know noise and movement to an absolute minimum. So now we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna backtrack. I'll show you where I'm gonna put my camp. I'm gonna find a place for the camp now. Ethan is standing right next to the tree. Like I said, I wouldn't come to the tree first. I would come up towards the tree. I would stop someplace short and set up my camp. And then I would go the rest of the way in to hunt. And obviously if you're coming in here to hang a stand, you hang your, or you set your camp, then you go in and hang your stand. Um, but fortunately, the, this one's already up. So now let's assume that I'm coming up from the bottom. I'm gonna find a spot to put my, you know, my, my sleeping quarters. So here's that main trail. I wanna be below that, 15 yards, 12 yards from the tree. 
So anything below this is fair game. I, a lot of this vegetation is gonna be gone. The leaves are gonna be gone, the foliage. So you can't look at it now and say, hey, you could put your camp anywhere and you'd disappear because when fall comes, that, that's not the case. So I would look for fallen trees as one option. You know, where you could put the, you know, the, the sleeping bag right up against that tree. But also that keeps you from rolling down the hill. Sometimes they're steep enough that, I mean, this is steep enough that if I got rolling, you know, who knows where I'd end up. So I would set the camp right against a tree, a standing tree, or better yet, a down tree. I think I found my spot. It's nasty right now. Uh, unfortunately, we probably should have brought a weed whacker with or something, but there's a stump with a bunch of brush around it. That's gonna be my, my uh, camp spot. Looks like I wasn't the only one that had this idea. There's a deer bed 10 feet away from where I was gonna put my, my camp. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a more open spot. This is probably where I would have it in the fall, but it's just so thick here right now. I'm gonna find a spot that's more open so it's easier to show you what I do. All right, this is perfect. This tree will keep me from rolling down the hill. So I'm gonna make my camp just on the uphill side of it. So I'll show you what all I've got. Like I said, that canoe bag is really an important part of the gear list. I'm looking all around me for poison ivy. I'm really sensitive to poison ivy. One tip on poison ivy, as soon as you get out of the woods, if you're sensitive, just scrub off really good. It's just an oil. If you can get that oil off your skin right away, you won't get it. So as soon as we get done here, I'm gonna just scrub down. So I've got a sleeping pad. Uh, this is, I don't know, it's just the Cabela's. Uh, I don't even know what it's called. I'm not sure if they even make it anymore, but it's got foam in it and you can inflate it to make it, you know, stand up a little bit better. I like the foam because of the insulation. Uh, a straight up air mattress is probably okay, but you don't get quite as much insulation out of that. So foam pad's important. I'm gonna pull it out and get it kind of started on its own. So you try to keep all your stuff as compact as you can so you can carry it in easily, but also you don't wanna have a, a big footprint out here because any deer that's passing during the night Excuse me. You don't want them to see you. There are probably not very many of them going to be down the hill from me because we're below the trails, like I said. We're probably 30 yards from the tree right now. Okay, that'll start to inflate on its own. I've got a stocking hat. That's a big deal. And you'll see why later. Let's say it's late October, early November in my area. You're going to have lows in the 20s and uh, unless you want to put your head completely inside like a mummy bag, which I don't like doing that, um, I have my head out so I have a stocking hat on it and that, that makes a huge difference in sleeping warm. Might not need it tonight though because it's supposed to be like 80 degrees. <laughs> this is the bag. Obviously the core piece of the equipment is the bag. This wasn't a real expensive one. Let's see what it's called. Uh, Mountain Smith Berthoud. It's a minus 20 degree bag. I can't remember where I bought it, REI or someplace. Uh, I wanted something that was minus 20 or, or even warmer. And uh, you think, well, it's not gonna be 20 degrees below zero. Well, they're not rated like that. Um, I don't know how this would keep you warm in 20 below zero, but it does keep you warm in 20 degrees, 20 above zero. I know that for a fact. But like I said, this is the heart and soul of the system is a really warm sleeping bag. And they make, you know, goose down models that are way lighter, but they're super expensive. Uh, I don't know, I can't remember what I paid for this, but it wasn't a ton you know, a little over a hundred bucks. But if you look at it, I mean, this is a really serious sleeping bag. It would have to get really cold before that wasn't enough to keep me. 
keep me going. Okay, now I got a bag and a pad. I need something to keep the wind and rain off me and to keep my scent bottled up. You know, I'm gonna put all my clothes in that rubber canoe bag when I climb down, but I need something to keep my, my human scent from just drifting up and down the, the ridges. So this is, a, this is an REI Shell Bivy. Uh, there's probably others of them on the market. I think this was a hundred bucks, believe it or not. One pound, three ounces. This is made out of some kind of nylon. It's waterproof. Um, gosh, it had tent pegs. <laughs> I won't be using those, I don't think, but we got them anyway. The, uh, the bivy is important because you think, oh, I can just sleep in my sleeping bag. That's not gonna cut it. Um, you need more protection and you need something to hold your scent. So that's where the bivy comes in. There's a, I'll have to try to remember how this whole thing works, but there's a, there's a mosquito fly that you can zip closed and it's got some kind of a, like a frame to it so that once you're laying in it, in theory, you could have the, the uh, fly open and still be underneath the bivy sack. I never had, never had need for that. Um, I think if it was raining, you'd have to, but like I said, normally I like to have my head out. I just sleep better if I'm not bottled up inside something. Okay, so bivy sack goes down first, pad goes inside, sleeping bag goes on top of the pad. I'm gonna show you how I prepare the spot first. So you wanna get down to the bare dirt because let's say that it is, um, you know, 20 degrees out and you dig down to the dirt, you know, the, the soil itself might be, well, let's say it's 20 at night. The, the dirt might be 40 or 45 degrees and that makes it a lot more comfortable when you're sleeping on that with your insulation because um, like even sleeping in a blind, everybody thinks that would be so warm. Well, the problem is the air underneath the blind is 20 degrees. You know, here, I mean, you can't warm that up. It's never gonna feel better than that because it's always moving. So here, at least we can get down to the dirt and we can get that, you know, say 40 degree uh, temperature, plus we can warm that dirt and make it even better insulation. So all I'm doing now is just scratching out my bed, getting rid of the branches and the rocks. You always want to have your head up, so I'm going to be laying just like this. This tree will keep me during the night from rolling down the hill. Got a little spot here to put my phone. This is my alarm clock. See the little, little shelf, a little bedside, little bedside shelf. Pretty handy. <laughs> I'm going to remember this spot. All right. Baby sack goes down. Pad's good. Slide that inside the bivy. <clears throat> okay. Now comes the sleeping bag. Same exact thing. Slide it in on top of the pad. There's, there's my, there's my camp. You know, that's, that's basically how I do it. Like I'd spend the night just like that. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go through the whole process of what I would do. I've come up the hill. I've set up my camp. I'm going to go hunt there. I don't want this thing sitting there like that. You know, it's, they're going to see it. So I'm going to go ahead now. Putting all my extra pieces back inside the rubber bag. Rubber bag on top. You know, you get the idea. 
I'm not going to cover this thing 100%, but I cover this with leaves and sticks. And uh, I've had deer while I was on stand walk 15 feet from my camp and not even look at it. Uh, they don't even know it's there, but you do have to cover it, you know, because you don't want to be up there hunting and you know, have that thing just sitting there for all the deer to see. So let's assume that I've got it covered. Um, now I'm going to walk through the rest of this and, and show you what I do at the, at the end of legal shooting time. So at the end of legal shooting time, I've just left my tree stand. Um, I need to get all the stuff cleaned off my, my camp here, but I also need to strip down. And this is where most people go wrong. They assume that you keep most of your clothes on in order to stay warm, but that's not the way it works. There's been a lot of research done on that. And uh, you know, the less you wear inside that sleeping bag, for whatever reason, the warmer you stay. I think it's the, you know, the maybe you, you, your body tries to regulate heat, you know, incorrectly or something. But uh, I did really, really well stripping right down. I mean, I, I've got. Uh, I'm going to keep the t-shirt on, and I, I do have a pair of shorts under here, so. Trust me, you're not going to see me in my skivvies. But let's just say, you know, now I'm stripping down to my absolute base layers. You know, that's probably probably what I would do. Um, I'm probably not going right down to skin. I've got this all cleaned off now. And I've got something to stand on. All my hunting clothes is coming off. All right, I've got all my hunting clothes off and I'm gonna put them in the bag. You gotta remember, it's kind of like almost dark out. So I'm not worried about piling stuff on top of this. I'm assuming that the deer aren't gonna see it. Now, even though it's 90 degrees out, <laughs> I'm gonna get inside this bag and show you what the camp looks like when I'm completely done. So normally I would have my stocking hat on now. Usually I'll take, you know, one under layer, some mid-weight garment or something. That would be my pillow. And uh, zip everything up. I can zip all this stuff closed if I want to, like if it's raining. If it's not raining, I leave it open, like I said, and just sleep out on, on the, you know, in the open with my head. Um, this is not bad. It's a little bit hot today, but I think you'd be shocked at how cozy this is. Um, I know I was. The only thing that was weird about it, uh, two things probably. One was all the critters that would come by during the night, come crunching past, be one in the morning and you'd wake up and something's walking past like 10 feet away. You're just waiting for it to step on you or whatever. The other thing was, you know, it gets dark at 5.30 you know, after daylight savings time changes. And now you climb down from your tree stand and you can't be here making a bunch of noise because the deer, some deer are gonna still be around. Um, so you just kind of crawl in and, and, and lay still. Well, I'd fall asleep at six and it's not hunting light until like 6.30 the next morning. Well, you know, I would try to sleep for 12 hours because they had nothing else to do. You know, I've got my phone you know, if I can get reception, I might be able to watch a video or something, but even that, you know, it's just too much, too much movement, too much, you know, to draw attention to you. So this is basically how it works. You know, I spend the night sleeping here, get up first thing in the morning. I got all my stuff inside here. It's still dry, no dew. Um, you know, the bag, the bivy sack kept me dry. And uh, I just put my clothes on and walk 30 yards and get back in the tree and I'm back to hunting. I do the same thing. You know, I throw a bunch of sticks and, and leaves and stuff over the top of this uh, camp. And if I'm gonna stay there again the next day, obviously I just get right back in it. But if not, I'll roll up the camp at midday when I leave and take it out with me. I don't try to do any of that stuff in the dark. So, um, I don't think there's much else to say. I mean, not, if it wasn't so hot, you know, I'd be snoozing here in about a couple of minutes, but I'm going to have to get out of here before I sweat it up too much. Uh, hopefully you got a kick out of it. This actually does work. Uh, and it's not a gimmick. And it's not something that you do just to get people to say, wow, that's really cool. This actually makes a difference. If you can't hunt a spot without bumping the deer coming and going, 
you have two choices. Like I said, either you can't hunt it or you can't leave. So I'm going to leave you with that. Well, I appreciate you joining me this week. I'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. And remember to always dream big. I let Ethan test it. Now he doesn't want to leave. Uh, I'm definitely doing this next fall, 100%. It's not a gimmick. It's actually extremely comfortable. And I was a little bit curious about it coming up here, but I'm definitely trying it next fall.